Hello everyone, welcome to another episode on our Twin Turbo Swap N54 E46 build. Today I'm going to drop the rear differential carrier and start reinforcing the subframe with subframe reinforcement plate. I'm going to go ahead with the epoxy method since it's more DIY friendly and I don't have to start welding anything because I'm not a good welder. So without further ado, let's get rolling. I've taken both wheel hubs uh, connections off of it. Uh, let me show you how to get it done. There's an 80 millimeter bolt right here where the shock mounts. So once you take it off, this will drop slightly. Just be careful when you do so. And once you do that, put some pressure on the hub and push it down and pull the spring off of it. It'll just slide out. And once you get that done, there's a ABS or a wheel speed sensor. Like right on here, so it's a Allen 5, unscrew it, take it off of the routing and it should just fall down. And there's one, another sensor which is right here by the brake pads, there you go. So there's another sensor by the brake pad that, that still lets you know when the brakes uh, gets worn out. So take that sensor out, rear trailing arm is held by three 80 millimeter bolts. That shouldn't be that hard to just break it, use the impact. And then there's on the passenger side, I had the leveling sensor on this car. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's covered in dust. Uh, just unplug it. And once you do that, you just have uh, only the brake line. To do that, you're going to use a 17 millimeter at the bottom and 11 millimeter on top and turn the 11 millimeter anti-clockwise and that should get it loosened up i believe that's about it on both sides all i gotta do is figure out how to get the rear handbrake cable off and then drop the differential carrier so yeah that's about it let's get going Before you drop the differential, there's this brace. It has two 30 millimeter bolts underneath here. So it's on both sides. So you're gonna have to take the brace off. Once you take the brace off, the differential should come down. And on the front, you're gonna have this. So to take it off, you're gonna use a 32 millimeter and turn it clockwise and it should come down. And I inspected all my joints where the subframe connects. I did not see any cracks, uh, micro cracks whatsoever. So it's a, it's a good thing. I used some brake cleaner and different kinds of fluid to just clean up a bit because it's uh, quite dirty. But yeah, so just inspect if, the, if you have any cracks or micro cracks, uh, any visible cracks. Uh, I'm going to grind off the paint a bit and check as well. If you do, have any cracks you might have to start weld over it before you do so so just keep in mind if you already have any visible cracks on your subframe you're gonna have to weld it welcome to another day I stopped last time by taking the complete frame off of the chassis so today we're gonna start jumping in underneath the car start cleaning up the mounting points and I'm gonna make some holes through the two front mounting points for the next step of the reinforcement. But for now, we're gonna start cleaning up the bottom and start uh, epoxying the subframe uh, reinforcement plates. All right, let's talk about the whole reinforcement kit. This is 3M08115. This is what recommended by most people to be used. So I bought this on Amazon for 40 bucks and this is the gun, cocking gun. Yeah, the thing, whatever you do to put the, you know, get the epoxy out. 
So this is a bit expensive, and but I was able to find like a generic model on Amazon for like twenty twenty five dollars. So look around if you're gonna get one of these. Uh, just don't pay like seventy or eighty dollars for it. A couple of flap discs to use with my grinder, a brush so I could spread the epoxy on the plates. And now to the plates. I bought these plates from a site called Garagistic. I'll put a link below. It's a local SoCal company. I basically just uh, went to the shop and picked it up since I needed it this weekend. But yeah, if you guys uh, need anything, you could order it online. Most of the places where they sell, it's about $100 and, uh, you know, $120, $140. Depending where you get it, it's around that range plus shipping. I picked this up for like $95 from Garage Steak. They were kind of the cheapest I could find because I'm on a budget. About these plates, I talked to the guys over there. The, they seem pretty cool. They're, they're a bunch of enthusiasts as well. They had a couple of cool builds, a couple of the E36, and uh, I saw one. I believe it's a 190E or something. I think it's a Mercedes uh, 201W. Anyhow. When I talked to the guys, they recommended welding the plates. If you're doing it, do your own research as well. What I have found out so far is by doing it the epoxy method, there's a higher contact patch between the plates and the subframe, so it's it's pretty good. And you're not going to have any negative effects of welding like heat warping or warping the middle, things like that. So. Unless you are a good welder or you take it to a professional, I would say just be mindful when you do the welding plates because you could warp the metal or the chassis or, you know, set it on fire, things like that. I do look like a scientist who's about to do an experiment. All right. So, uh, yeah, uh, still a lot of dust. Anyhow, I've done uh, grinding off uh, most of the paint, scraping all the dirt and everything, and uh, cutting all the plates uh, to the size. So, yeah, that's a, that's a lot of work than I thought. Let me show you guys. But first of all, safety is important. Make sure you get some glasses to cover your eyes when you're grinding. Well, the paint suit, because uh, a lot of sparks and the debris just keeps getting on my skin and it was irritating. So, yeah. Wear your safety equipment uh, when you work with, uh, you know, things like this. All right. So this is the passenger side where I got the plate roughly mounted where I want them to be and make sure everything is cleaned. I use my grinder with our, you know, the abrasive, I forgot what it's called. Anyway, yeah, I used the grinder, then I used a wire wheel just to get the corners I could not get. Then used a little bit of sandpaper just to load it out. So, yeah, this side is perfect, right out of the bat. And so is the rear driver's side as well. All the edges are cleaned. Make sure there's a proper, like a full flat surface, mounting surface. These tiny ones, no problem. Uh, some I heard they glue it, some don't. Uh, I'm just gonna, you know, epoxy it anyways. These I had to modify a bit. So how I've seen is the plate is used the other way around. So it's, it's turned, so the, this end will be on this side and this end will be here. And uh, what I noticed, when you have it that way, the hole aligns to the corner. So you don't have like centered mounting look point. I would recommend if you're going to do it yourself, uh, just uh, double check, uh, use your own, you know, intuition. But I figured I'm going to do it this way because my mounting point is in the center and it has even distribution of strength or whatever it is. That's my thought. So when a force is applied, it would dis distribute traveling force evenly on both sides. I may be wrong, but hey. So what I had to do is I had to cut this edge a little bit slightly so it would make space for this. So there's a seam on this side, so it makes a seam. It's, it's not a perfect cut. I used the grinder, so don't judge. And on this side, it's the same as well. So if to do it the proper way, how the manual says you gotta drop the you're probably gonna have to drop the fuel tank 
because uh, like right now how I have it, it barely have enough space to you know clean up. But yeah, I did the same thing. I had to grind off on this edge a little bit. So now my mounting point is centered to the plate and so hoping it would distribute the force evenly to the mount. Uh, that's about it. At this point onwards, I'm going to take the plates off, grind them out and clean up the bottom. So I gotta, I'm going to use some acetone and clean up all these mounting points so they're, uh, they don't have any dirt or debris. And then uh, we're going to start uh, epoxying them. All right, let's keep going. I cleaned them with the wire brush, then I went with the grinder to make some uh, scratches all around it. So there's plenty of rough surface for the epoxy to bond to. Yeah, so yeah, I did this. And I, I went under the car and cleaned up it as well. So I have the 3M08115, it's what's recommended, uh, panel bounding epoxy. Uh, I left it on the sun almost all day, so it's pretty warm. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start mixing them up and lay them on these plates and start bolting them up. I am done epoxying the plates to the chassis. So you see it's not a pretty job but it does a job. And I just applied extra on the chassis where I grinded the face. I'm going to do some primer on top just in case so it'll be like another layer of protection from rust and everything. There you go. And I use the same bolts in the front. I just hand tighten it. I'm going to take it off uh, in a bit, but you know, it's, you don't have to tighten it to the maximum. You just have to hand tighten it. And as long as it sticks there, it should be fine. So I used about half a bottle of uh, whatever I bought. So I used X on the side. Yeah, that's about it. The job's done. Took me two days. All right. All right, so we dump for the day. So drop the subframe, put the plates on, epoxy, put bolts back on, you're good to go. Oh, well, yeah, that was, that was simple. I mean, it, that's a procedure, but, you know, it's going to take you some time. A couple of things I would like to mention. When I did the epoxy part, I tightened the screws, just hand tightened them. I'm going to give it about four hours. That's what it says on the thing before it starts something, like start getting hardened or whatever the epoxy is supposed to do. So I'm, I'm going to take the bolts off, or just at least crack them off in about three hours, because it's been about an hour now. So then the next part, oh yeah, I would recommend getting one of these uh, painter's suit. You could get it from Home Depot or Swap Me, I don't know, wherever you choose. I just picked up for like five bucks, three for five or fifteen, something like that. It was really cheap. It actually helps you when you're doing this job if you don't have a lift. Uh, if it's on jack stand and you're just crawling underneath there, you get a grind underneath and do the epoxy laying, painting, whatever you call it, all, and uh, it can get messy. I'm messy, so I don't know about you. I made a mess, and uh, if you would like to avoid making a mess, well, at least I made a mess on the suit, so that's why I'm recommending getting a suit. It'll help you out in the long run. And uh, next part, yeah, there, I, I did, I don't know if I'm gonna put it in here. So I made two holes through the front subframe mounts. It may not make sense to you now, but it will make sense to you maybe in the next video or the video after that. Soon, I'm going to say why I did that. Oh, if you want to buy this uh, reinforcement plate, I'll put a link to Garagestic site so you guys can contact them if you would like to purchase them. And in SoCal, you could just go pick it up. Uh, they're pretty close by. Orange County, somewhere around there. What else? Uh, I think that's about it. Time to call it a day. So. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed, I'm gonna throw it somewhere on here. And uh, you know, subscribe, click that button there, helps out. And if you watched it and if you like it, like, comment, share it. That helps out too. I don't get much comments, I don't know why. You know, comment, something. If it's, if it's good, yeah, if it's bad, yeah, sure, that too, I'll take it. And uh, make sure you click the bell too. There's a bell, so you'll know as soon as the video comes out. Other than that, that's about it. I'll see you guys next time. Oh, yeah, next time we'll be going on a birthday. Keep breaking bolts.